Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to go over the New York Open, the Judas Swing, and the AM Silver Bullet for Tuesday, June 20th. The dark gray area is the Silver Bullet uh, AM session, so that's the 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and this is 8.30 to 9.30, okay? 9.30 is right here, this candle right here, so that's the New York Open, okay? So when we start at the New York Open, we see that price took out the sell side liquidity here. It is, I mean, it goes back all the way over to yesterday. Okay, so it, it's it's taken out highs, taken out highs, taken out highs. Okay, but then when we then when it starts at nine and eight thirty, nine o'clock, nine fifteen, nine thirty, it takes out this. Swing low, this swing low, this swing low, this swing low. There's a lot of lows being broken. So you have a lot of sell side liquidity being taken out. Okay. So I'm going to move this and make this bigger here. So you see that, hey, sell side liquidity is taken. So when we see that, one of our first things we want to see liquidity taken. And then we want to see a market structure shift and with displacement, a fair value gap, and take a trade. Okay, so what some people could have seen, I'm gonna show you what you could, some people could have seen, and then I'm gonna show you what, something different, okay? So they could have seen this sell side liquidity taken. Like I said, it took out a lot of liquidity here. You know, even this one took out all of this. Okay, so it it, it is, is by far, it's taken out a lot of liquidity. Then you're looking for a short market structure shift. Well, some people use this as the short term high here as a market structure shift. Okay, so they could have seen that as a market structure shift to the upside. Right, you have displacement, takes out a swing high. Is there a fair value gap? There is, and there is, and there is, right? So here's a the first fair value gap. It does get traded into. You could have bought there. And placed your trade right there at the top. Stop going below this. Aim for two to one, which is eight, which is above this. And you got you got stopped out. Took a loss. There's, there it is. Let's just show you that right there. You got in here, came up, then took you out. So if you took this as a market structure shift, though, with your narrative, if that's what you believe, that this is a market structure shift, then this down candle right here, let me get this fair value gap out of the way. This down candle here, this is a swing low. That would, if that gets broken through on the downside with displacement like it did here, then that would be a market structure shift as well. And so you could say, there's a market structure shift to go back down, right? Did it leave a fair value gap? It did. And does it trade back into? It does. So you could get in right there and take your short position here. Your stop goes below the first candle, one tick above. You never trade through and you win. So that one works out. So you would have had a loss. If you believed this, you would have had one loss. Let me throw this back on here just to show you. You would have had one loss here of four handles. Okay. So $200 loss right there. And you gained eight and a half. So you have $225 in the profit at that point. You took a loss and then you reverted back following your rules because this for your for you, if this was a market structure shift, then this one would be a market st structure shift to go down and you would have taken that trade if you followed your rules, okay? And then you would have got out right there and that's done, okay? Let me show you what I saw. This come down here, take out all liquidity. I was looking back up. I saw this swing high, but for me, that's not the swing high that, I, that for a market structure shift. Okay, I'm gonna take those market structure shifts off so it doesn't get confusing. I see this as the market structure shift. I need price to come all the way back up here and break this swing high right here. Okay, when that breaks that and then comes down, I'd be looking for fair value gaps to go up. But if it doesn't, I'm just looking at this as a pullback. And if you see, if you pull the fib from here to here, this is, you know, there here is optimal trade entry right here. So it's a little bit above. If you wanted to say, hey, Adam, I would have gone up to the top. It's still right in that, that optimal trade entry right there. So for me, I wasn't looking at it as a, 
reason to go long here. I was waiting for it to go reason for it to go short actually. And what I saw when I looked left, yeah, I see fair value gaps here, um, fair value gap over here, up here, volume imbalance here. Fair value gap here. I see. I see all that. Okay, and I'm not marking that. I'm looking for, well, for me, a better reason to go short. And I see this breaker block. Okay, so you know, price goes up, comes down, comes up, breaks this high, and then it breaks down. When it trades back up into it, that's a breaker. Okay, and what does it do? Here's up. Here's come down. Breaks this. So it takes out the high. And then trades down through it. When it comes back up, like it does right there, it stops dead on the tracks. So I mean, look at that. To the tick, it stops. The wick goes in one hand, one tick. That's fine. But the body tells a story, and the body stopped right at that breaker block. It gets respected there. Second candle, third candle, fourth candle. You could buy at any point right here. So for me, if I was trading the new the the New York Open, this is the Judas swing to go down and coming back up. This first initial is is the fake move. And technically, this is the fake move because we're really supposed to be going down. But where is it going? It's going into optimal trade entry. It's going into the breaker block. This all tells me that this is a good place to, to sell right there. Take my my short right there. It goes above the... I have it two ticks above the breaker. For me personally, I actually probably would have gone up here because three handles is nothing. And to go above this high, fine, because that would mean it mean it break the structure that I'm actually on the wrong side of the market. So I, I'd put my stop there. I'd come down here. That's still a three point six seven trade. You could go down to so there's your four R trade, your breaker block. For that's the New York Open. The real Judas swing was to come up, thinking you're going long. When actually you're just it's just coming up to the breaker, the vault, the optimal trade entry to go short. This little one minute candle that just took out liquidity to go up to stop there to come down. That's it. Okay, so then when we come over to the silver bullet hour over here, we are going short here, but we need to take out liquidity, right? Well, we take out liquidity right here. And that's fine, but we're clearly in a bearish trend at this point, right? I mean, at this point, when I start at the silver bullet hour to go long, at this point, I need this swing high here to be taken out. I'm not looking for this one. I'm looking for the swing high here. Okay. But what I see when I look left, I see, let me pull off this uh, short position here. Just leaving the arrows on there. When I come to the chart, I see that there's a fair value gap right here. I mean, I'm going to looking to go short. You could take a trade here, have it above. You would be fine right there. Okay. But I'm looking at more structure. What else can confirm my move to go down? Because I'm not getting a, another sweep of liquidity in the, in the silver bullet hour. But I am targeting something. When you look at this, this right here, this blue box, I know it's all blue. That is the one hour fair value gap. Okay. And the midpoint is right there. That's the consequent encroachment line right there. Okay. So that's what I'd be targeting to go down. Okay. But when I look left from my start here, I see there's a fair value gap. I see an order block right here. I also see a mitigation block right here. Why is that a mitigation block? Because you get high, a low, a, a lower high. It fails to take out that high. But then when it trades through it, just like the breaker, when it comes back up, it's a mitigation block and trades down. Look at the mitigation block here. You know, if you wanted to not take the wicks, you're like, hey, some people don't take the wicks. Okay, fine. It still gets traded into. I like the wicks because they're so short here. I take the wicks with them. So you've got an order block, a mitigation block, beyond a fair value gap here, but you've got all these things to confirm going short. So you could sell there. If you didn't get in right here, you, you, you watched it and you saw that it was respecting it, another one respecting it, then you got in on the third candle, fine. Get in there. Your stop would go above the mitigation block. Now you have its actual unicorn entry. 
you've got the order block, a mitigation block, and you'd go down, you'd target the consequent encroachment of the one hour fair value gap. So that's a 15.75 handle move right there. ICT says, hey, you need to target 10. Well, you get 15. You, can, you could have gotten more if you held it. But right now, this is what we were targeting. There you go. There's 15.75 R trade. And that is your silver bullet for the AM session and your New York Open Judas Swing, which was right here, to the breaker block. That trade, let's go with that one right there. Those are your two trade setups good clean setups for June 20th.